black people. It's all about the unity. There's nothing they can do with us, so ain't nobody moving me. Like Dr. King, we make it plain and simple. Bringing knowledge and fire at reality simple. Reality simple. My black people. It's all about the unity. There's nothing they can do with us, so ain't nobody moving me. Like Dr. King, we make it plain and simple. Bringing knowledge and fire at reality simple. I'm not really worried about convincing you about what I believe in. My main concern is to find people with the like-minded minds, like minister, the realist temple, the reality is temple on earth. I can relate with that guy. I can say he's talking sense because he has intelligence. And he doesn't come up with rubbish. He comes up with well thought conversations. He's thought about this. He's still thinking about it as right now as we speak about it. And after that, he'll be thinking about it because he's a thinker. He's not just a doer taking information and repeating it. He's a thinker. He's been intrigued. His mind's been intrigued by reality, by things on earth that have. My brother Angel Snubnob Seven at the Reality Simple, and to give props to him because I listen to all of Angel Snubnob Seven's videos. I think that um, he comes from a different angle, and there's a powerful message in a lot of the videos that he put out. And I try to catch all of them. I, I look at him as a free thinker and a person that's willing to challenge those of which he don't agree with or which he may think differently from. And I really respect him for that. He's challenged KB, KMBS, and he has also challenged the Black Supremacy Movement as well. And I have nothing against that because that which cannot be challenged cannot be stand, cannot stand and will not stand and will not survive the test of time. How many challenges we can withstand will determine how long we will be able to stand. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the gatekeeper or the host of this particular program, known here on the internet as the mighty, 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 mm. Angel Snub Number no. 7, I am your brother and hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. I would like to spend the next few minutes, if you don't mind, it's, it's always an honor that you would give me a little bit of your time. I, I am so happy that you would find me worthy and I very much appreciate it. I would like to present to us something so that we can use our brains so we can have something to think about and I want us to really think and in order to bring into a new reality we must plan for the future we must think ahead of, our, of ourselves not only of the present but of the future the title of this particular video, I would call it Nuclear War. Is it a necessary evil? Why would I say something like that? Why would I come up with a title? Let me just put this out here and we can talk about it after I give you uh, my opinion. In religious teachings, and perhaps even outside of religious teachings, the prophets of God 
And there are many people today who tell us and, and attempt to warn us about the end of the world. I would like to tell you that the end of the world has happened many times. Some of us believe that when we talk about the end of the world, we are talking about the end of the earth, of which is a possibility because we live in a universe where you have meteorites moving. In fact, the earth itself is moving. And if the right piece of stone approach the earth, it could tear the planet in half if it hits the earth at the right speed. So when we talk about the end of the world, it is a great possibility that we could be talking about the end or the destruction of this planet. However, also when you talk about the end of the world, This is also in reference to the civilizations, the great cities, the great nations that human beings have built. So it does not necessarily mean the end of the, of the earth. And during the time that the human being has been on this planet, Many civilizations, many great nations have come and they've gone. And I'm very sure there were people who were living then that warned the people the end of the world. And the end of the world can happen due to war when you are conquered by somebody else. It can happen due to Famine, natural disaster. When Rome fell, life as they knew it, that was the end of the world. When Egypt was a great power, when it fell, that was the end of a world. In religious teachings, it talks about Babylon. But when Babylon fell or was destroyed, that was the end of the world. The end of the world is anything or any life that you are used to and it comes to an abrupt end. The end of the world. If you work at McDonald's and you work at McDonald's for years and years and years and all of a sudden McDonald's closes, that's the end of the world. <laughs> The end of the world of McDonald's. That's the life that you knew. The end of the world is the end of the life that you knew. As long as there is sufficient resources, the human beings on this planet can thrive. As long as there are sufficient resources so that one may have shelter, clothe oneself, feed oneself, then a species or life can thrive. However, using an experiment that was done with mice, if you put mice in an environment, and in that environment there is plenty of space, there is plenty of food. Then among the mice or the rat population, everybody is getting along. But when things start closing in and mice begin to live up on one another, the space becomes overcrowded. Then violence increases. There is fighting. 
And you see this right now on this planet. As the nation's populations become more abundant. There is a race and there is fighting over resources. The human population, unlike mice, mice have natural predators. And on this planet, most creatures have natural predators that keep their numbers in uh, in check so that the environment the resources so that the, so that the resources can support that population there is only one life form on this planet that does not have a natural predator there is one life form on this planet who have learned how to fight disease and that is the human being. But at the same time, with the population of the planet growing more and more, the resources are dwindling. And so now what you see is a fight for those resources. And as those resources dwindle, you will see more and more conflict. You will see more and more violence. Something has to give. I want to make this point to those of us who are black conscious, black nationalists, those of us who are just, we're just so pro-black, we want to go back to Africa, all this kind of thing. I want to tell you something very quickly. I want to give you a scenario. I want to give you a quick example. Let us just say that you and I, black people, we're able to go back to Africa. You go back to Africa, but yet and still, nothing, the reality does not change. This planet, the resources are dwindling. Fresh water is disappearing. Oil is disappearing. Gas, coal, all these fossil fuels that have that we are used to having that cause this population increase. More and more natural disasters are occurring. More droughts. More flooding. So that means less food. So even if you went back to Africa, you still have to face a dwelling resource. So now you are fighting the Caucasian people for your liberation. Now that you get your liberation, your resources are still going to dwindle. They're not going to last forever. So at one time, you love black. Black this, black power. But when, re but when resources begin to dwindle, people begin to look out for themselves because that's just the natural instinct. We are not going to starve together. People are going to begin to look at their tribes, their families. Somebody is going to have to do without. Somebody is going to have to perish. People begin to look out for their own. So when we talk about the doom of this planet, it's a possibility that what the prophets prophesize about it could be nuclear war. And nuclear war would kill billions of people. Billions, when the bombs first drop, then you, many would die from radiation poisoning. But nuclear war, they claim will destroy the human being. I really doubt it. But many would die. But then it would break the population back, the human population back down, where now the resources that's available can support the population. And the survivors of the nuclear holocaust, the survivors of the nuclear war, when you come up out of this situation, nobody won't care about black. 
Nobody won't care about pink. Nobody won't care about red. Nobody won't care about racial color. They won't. You won't care about gender, gender or class. In fact, the future babies that you have might mutate into something that don't even look human anymore. This is a possibility. I'm just putting something out here for us to begin with because we are obsessed with, I'm a black man. I'm a Caucasian. And really, all of humanity is under threat. This is a real situation and it has nothing to do with race or gender or none of these things that y'all hollering and screaming about day in and day out. This is a threat to the human being. This is your reality. And you are on that path and you're going to have to face this reality sooner or later. Just think about it. I just wanted to put that out there for us to think about. Jot down your comments as your brother. The Angel Snuffing Up 7. I know it's a lot to think about and it's a lot to comprehend, but it's a reality, I'm telling you. Jot down your comments. This was and is the Reality's Temple on Earth. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the gatekeeper of this particular program, known here on the internet as the mighty, mighty, mighty mm, Angel Snub Nub Seven. I am your brother. And hopefully your friend, Talik Ibn Rahm. I would like to just spend a few minutes and present to us a topic of discussion that some of you probably think about. And uh, I just would like to get your views, your opinions on this particular subject matter because I find it disturbing. Now, there are many of us, especially in the so-called black community, in fact it has become the norm that so many of our people, we are born from relationships that are void of religious ritual. We are born to unmarried parents. There are no vows taken or given to the uh, other mate or spouse and the children that comes from a union of people who are not married the children are called bastards the children are called illegal wow wow that's 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 deep to me. Illegal. Now, marriage is supposed to be required by God. And since these people did not obey God and participate in re in religious ritual then the children they have are illegal. It's against the law. Not the law of the land, but against God. Now at the same time, I want you to listen to me. Your God also creates nature. And nature has law. 
and under the law of nature that your God created when a sperm meets egg the sperm and the egg coming together creates baby that is the law of nature in human beings in animals in fish in any living creature on this planet when a sperm meets an egg unless you are a one cell organism and you can clone yourself and split it is necessary for sperm and egg to come together and that is the law of nature but religion overrides the law of nature and brings another law that says not only are you required to sleep together and bring sperm and egg together but you must involve yourself in a ritual so that when the child is born they are legal now this is confusing because the law of nature dictates that what has happened is legal but yet it's still under the doctrine of men under various religions they said the act because you don't do it in the name of God is illegal but yet it's still the dog the deer plants and other animals nobody is required to go through some type of ritual in order for their babies to be legal but God is behind both laws this is confusing and so when the child or the children are born out of wedlock you call these children illegal now in America the divorce rate in America is almost 90 percent so the person or the people get married but, but within the next two years or less they get a divorce the children are born in wedlock the children are legal but yet and still their parents don't stay together but you're not taking that into consideration I guess as long as this this wedlock thing happened during the time these children was given birth it doesn't make any sense because what what difference do it make if you married or unmarried it's the only thing you're going to do is turn around and get divorced what special what is special what is the benefit for the child to be birthed under the ritual of marriage or or, or wedlock and the children that you that do not fall or, or who are born outside of wedlock you call them a bastard this is why I do not like religion this is why all of us should reject religion how are you going to turn around and call a child a bastard a nasty vile profane nasty who name to a child where well, you a bastard how are you going to tell a child that the child came into being through the law of nature and that is legal but as soon as somebody don't follow your religious ritual now what was natural what is legal has become illegal and you call a poor baby that have nothing to do with their circumstance you turn around and tell them or call them a bastard how could y'all tell a child that and I've heard grown people well that's what you are that's what you are religion makes us heartless makes us have no compassion makes us not use common sense or think you gonna tell a baby call a child a bastard 
And even as a child, just hearing that name, you know something is bad about it. You illegal. What was illegal should have been the parents, not the child. The child is a victim. So how are you going to call the, a victim a nasty name? You should call the parent who are fornicators, who may be adulterers, and they also are the bastard that put this child in this position. But what is wrong with this child coming to birth just because the parents did not fall within your religious system? This is some kind of arrogance. What makes the children that are born from parents that are married, what makes them special? I see children who are now adults born from parents that was married that fill the jails and the prisons. They are homosexuals. They are thieves. They are liars. They were born from people who was married under the Christian church or however you're supposed to be married. A religious ritual, how is it supposed to give you some type of Respect. How does it how does it change the condition? What 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 kind of benefit it is to the people who are who get married and to the child that they birth under this ritual, this marriage, this under this wedlock. It's all a joke. And most of these people who get married, you are liars. You marry for the wrong reasons. You are only married for a few minutes and then you are in divorce court giving thousands and thousands and millions of dollars to lawyers to settle your divorces and you split the children up and you divide the children. This child has to determine, first of all, the child believes they might have something to do with the divorce. And then the child has to choose between mother and father. A child that was born out of wedlock, many of them don't have to go through all that madness that religious rituals produce. You want to get married, but you don't have the discipline. And you are a liar and a hypocrite. You don't have the discipline to be married. So the people that get married are weak. They are not honest. They don't have no discipline. To death do us part through through sickness and health. And you divorce for because my wife owes me two dollars, you will divorce her. He's not making enough money, so I will divorce him. All kinds of other silly stuff that you come up with. So how are you better? How do you have the nerve to call a child a bastard? What's so special about you and your marriage? What do you bring to the table? And above all, how can you be so, what is the word I'm looking for? How can you be so mean and evil spirit to a child? And you're going to call them illegal. And you're going to call them a bastard. How can you call a child a bastard? Then you turn around and get upset because Paula Dean called somebody a nigger. Or somebody called this person or this name. And you run around calling children bastards. Y'all ain't no better. She's a racist. What are you? Calling little children babies bastards. Who are you? Y'all so arrogant and all filled with yourself. But see that what happens when you when your mind gets filled with all this nonsense. That religious teachings brings us. And these are your future. How are you going to hurt a little baby's feelings? Be so nasty and vile and profane to a child, an innocent baby that had nothing to do with their coming into existence because they don't fall into the criteria you think they should fall into. I tell us, leave religion alone. Jot down your comment. Let's talk about it. This is your brother Tali Gibbon Ra. This was and is the Reality's Temple on Earth.
in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the host or the gatekeeper of this particular program, known here on the internet as the mighty, mighty, mighty mm, Angel Snub Nub Seven. I am your brother, and hopefully your friend, Tali Even Ra. I would like just to spend a few minutes and give my opinion about this recent fiasco about uh, this lady uh, called Paula Dean. I don't know who Paula Dean is. I, I believe she's some type of southern cook or, or whatever. But there has been a lot of talk about her in recent uh, times about her making a racial slur in relation to the N-word. And before I continue, I would like for those who are offended, you're so self-righteous and holy, you're offended by the word, the N-word, then I suggest that you go somewhere else because I am going to say the word nigga. And why shouldn't I say the word nigga? Nigga is a word that has been used in this country for over 400 years with pride. It's 400 years old and you have never stopped. So since you never stopped, what is the uproar? What is the big deal? Because Paula Dean said the, said the word nigger in a disposition. What Let's call it a, she was in court and she said the word nigger or whatever it was a few years ago. She did not say nigger in recent times. What, like what difference does it really make? What I found living in America is that American people, y'all are the most fake, hypocritical, self-righteous, and arrogant things I have ever seen in my whole entire life. You run around here and claim you are the home of freedom, but yet and still this country has the most incarcerated people on the planet. You claim that you are a nation of peace. But as I speak, they are sending drones and soldiers all over the earth to kill people. And most times, now you have this strategy to kill people who you think might kill you. They've done nothing to you, but they might do something, so let me kill them because they might do something. This is dangerous thinking because based on the way I might talk, these paranoid, mentally ill idiots, oh, he's a domestic terrorist. Let's send a drone and drop a bomb on his house. This is your sick demonic thinking and y'all clapping you're so patriotic the word nigga has been used in this country for so long that a black woman named her child nigga so when the child gets called nigga that's the child's name so there is no offense the child said well my name is nigga what do you want this has been going on for 400 years. Paula Dean, and I am not her defense attorney. I am not her publicist. But Paula Dean grew up in a time where nigga was the norm. Like, so what? And the word has been used so much that it's difficult 
for people once they begin to use the word, just like when y'all cuss. Uh, honey, I'm going to stop cussing. I need to stop saying MF this and, 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 and the B word. And, but y'all never do because it's hard because it's, you've been using it so long and in fact you really enjoy it. I cannot judge Paula Dean to say whether she really enjoys the word or not. But I know that after hundreds of years of using the, the nigger word, it's something, unless you really, really want to, it's something that is difficult to stop saying. In fact, the victims of the word, black people, the so-called Negro, the descendants of slaves born in America, we've heard that word so much, we call ourselves nigger. So if the black people of this country, if so many of us call ourselves nigger, what do you expect from Caucasian people who said the word nigger that in fact created the word nigger? You have nigger in your movies. See, this is where the hypocrisy comes from. This is why y'all so fake. Why are you tripping off? Why are you supposed, supposed to be so outraged over Paula Dean saying the nigger word 60 years ago, or whatever it was, but yet it's still you buy rap records. You buy the word nigger. And all these rappers, because they black, you think that gives you the approval to say nigger now. Who gave them approval? You allow them. You own the record company. You on the radio station. But Paula Dean can't say nigga. 60 years ago, when nigga was the norm, it was out in the open. So what? Y'all so fake. And then you must really think that we are so naive. And you must think that people are so stupid that you don't say the word nigga behind our back. All of y'all in interracial relationships. And you so lovey dovey with Caucasian people. But as soon as your Caucasian or pink wife or husband, as soon as they get mad, the first thing they're going to say, nigga, because it's already there. It's already inside of them. When you get angry, the real you comes out. You can get me angry. I'm not going to call you all these different names because that's not what I'm about. I just tell the truth. But there is no malice. There is no hate. I'm letting you know the reality of things. You take it that way because you perfect. You don't want nobody to talk about you. You self-righteous and holy and mighty. Americans are the, some of the most fake, self-righteous, grandiose, arrogant people on this planet. Paranoid. You paranoid because y'all done so much evil to so many people. Now you terrorize the death. You don't like Paula Dean, and it's an outrage that Paula Dean said the word nigger. But you don't never tell your black citizens. You don't never tell these rappers. Where's the outrage? And you call women hoes and bitches. Where's the outrage? You actually buy and support. Calling people whores and bitches and niggas. Y'all so fake. Oh man, y'all so fake. Woo! Make me ashamed to be associated to be called an American citizen. How can you be so outraged because of a word which we should be outraged when somebody is being disrespectful, when they are hate-filled, and so forth. But at the same time, I could care less about the word nigger when there are more issues that you should be outraged with. Black unemployment in this country, Mr. and Mrs. White America, Caucasian or Pink America, however you want to view yourself, I'm just a human being, whatever you want to call yourself. Black unemployment is triple quadruple the national average. If you want to be outraged about something, be outraged over that and help the people. 
But see, that don't cost you nothing to be outraged because Paula Dean said the nigger word don't cost you nothing. You don't really have to really do anything. But in order to change the statistics on black unemployment mean you have to help black people and y'all don't want to help black folks do nothing. My brother J.T. Riley One says there's only two people in this world, real and fake. You can talk all you want to. I don't judge you on your talk. I judge you on your actions. And your actions speak louder than your words. Where is your outrage? How many people were was murdered and killed in Chicago last weekend or yesterday? Where is your outrage? But you outraged over the word nigga. Something that Paula Dean said during segregation 60, 70 years ago, how whatever. This is what makes y'all so fake. And you really think that you're fooling somebody. You don't fool me. There's many out here who you don't fool. In religious teachings, in the scriptures, it says that as a man thinketh, so is he. And these black people, African Americans, whatever you want to call us, we've been called that for so long, now we justify ourselves to call ourselves nigga. And it's your fault. Because you buy the rap records. You endorse calling, saying the word nigga. Now how you gonna turn around and get angry because Paula Dean said the word nigga? Y'all the most, woo! Man, these people are so fake. Man, these people are so fake. You fraud. You say you don't like the word nigga. But at the same time, according to your statistics, y'all love statistics. But according to your statistics offered to us by the government, black people are facing more discrimination in employment and housing and other uh, facets of this society than we did during the time of Dr. Martin Luther King. But you cover it all up. You try to show these Negroes that's supposed to be doing good to distract from what uh, black people really are suffering. Right there in Chicago and all over this country, you want to get upset over the word nigger. So you claim, y'all so fake. All over this country, they, the cities, are closing schools that are important to black people. Where's the outrage? Where's the outrage when you have black people who are a small percentage of the population of this nation, but over half the percentage in your jails and prisons and mental institutions, where is your outrage? Why aren't you trying to find out why? Because you consider us niggas and you talk about us behind our back. You don't want nothing good for the niggas. And you want to pretend you want to use Paula Dean as a scapegoat and put on this self-righteous facade. I ain't like Paula Dean. I ain't racist. I never said the N-word. We don't know what you said behind my back. That's the purpose of talking behind people's back so they don't hear it. You think calling people not calling black people niggas? You think the mayors and these corporate, these white guys called pink people in, in these corporate positions, CEOs not calling black people niggas? You can fool some people, but you're not going to fool me and many others. In fact, you're not even going to fool many Caucasian people. Because we know what's up. Y'all so fake. So why don't you get off of that? You're not going to bring that here. And leave Paula Dean alone. And if you really outraged, be outraged over some real things instead of this nonsense. Because basically that's all that it, that it is. With your fake self. I'm outraged because you think I'm a fool. <laughs> Woo! Jot down your comments. Let's talk about it. This your brother. 
the angel snapped up seven. This was and is the reality's temple on earth. In the name of my ancestors, peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. Of course, I am the gatekeeper of this particular program, known here on the internet as the mighty, 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 mm. angel snub number seven. I am your brother, and hopefully your friend. Talik even Ra. I would like to talk just for a few minutes about the American black man and woman's relationship with Caucasian or pink people from the romantic side. There really should be no side, especially romantic. Oh, there he goes again. He's, a, he's against interracial relationships. No, not really. I'm not against people who really love one another. There are circumstances that has happened between the black man and woman in America and the Caucasian people of this nation that makes one question the credibility and the validity of such romantic connections. There's a lot of missing pieces. What kind of missing pieces are you talking about? We talking about love. You can't help who you love. That's one of the first things that you say is that you can't help who you love. And that's a lie. Because if you couldn't help who you love, then the people that you fall in love with would have one eye, half a booty. The woman would have a full beard. She would weigh 700 pounds. They would be retarded. Not making mockery that they're retarded. They would be retarded. You pick and choose. And you determine what you want. So if you determine what you want, how are you can't falling in love with somebody? Get out of here. That don't, even, that don't even make any sense to me. But you can say that to idiots. There is an imbalance in these romantic relationships. One of the things that I question is that as far as the black person involved in these interracial relationships, this romantic thing that y'all have with Caucasian people, even though you and I both know our ancestors would not approve of you laying up with our, with the children of their oppressors. So you know, but you don't care. You just got this burning in your loins that you got to quit. I just got to be happy. I just got, I don't want to be lonely. So while you're not being lonely, so while you're trying to satisfy your own personal whatever you're looking for, you don't care about the fact that this nation and its children lynch your parents. They sick dogs on our ancestors. Some of them are still living. Well, some of them don't mind if we some of our ancestors were stupid. That's the bottom line. Some of them were scared of the oppressor. Some of them think in a, in a matter of insanity. Because they know they were dealing with a vicious people. And they suffer from what we call post-traumatic slave syndrome. When we fall in love. When we defend our abuser. 
It is a real illness. And some of y'all definitely fit that profile. A victim, a sufferer of post-traumatic slave disorder. But I want to say this very quickly before my time runs out. I have about nine minutes, so let me make this real quick. It's very funny that the black people, we are involved in these interracial relationships because of love. So you get love and you get sex. Oh, you get plenty of sex. You get plenty of sodomy. All sex is not sex. It's sodomy. The only sex is intercourse between the vagina and the penis. Everything else that y'all do that's what you call sodomy. Now it's very funny that the Caucasian people will give you plenty of sex. They might even give you a car. They might give you some trinkets, a little house. They might give you a multi-million dollar uh, basketball contract. Shouts out to LeBron James and the Miami Heat. You want an you wanna NBA title that does not mean anything. Not even to Caucasians. It's no benefit to nobody except we want some basketball games. It definitely does not help the black community at all. You get plenty of sex, but you get no power. You get no wealth. They are always in control. When your Caucasian lover, if they have money, if you notice, even in these interracial relationships, or if black people are involved. Well, of course, if black people are involved. But if they have money. The money does not come into the black community. The money always stays with the Caucasian people. You are never in control or make no laws that govern them. Oh, wait a minute there, buddy. You got President Obama. He's a black guy. He's the leader of the, of the free world. Including uh, Caucasian pink people, as you say, fella. Barack Obama is a puppet for Caucasian people, surrounded by a Congress that's basically Caucasian or pink. The, the judicial system is Caucasian or, or pink. The media is Caucasian or pink. Barack Obama means nothing. He does not rule or control anything. That's why he cannot get anything done, because he has to listen to these Caucasian and pink people who don't want to do right, have never done right for 400 years, especially when it, it comes to black people. So they would give you plenty of sex, and they would give you some trinkets, but they would not give you any kind of power. They would not give you any kind of wealth. Being rich is not wealth. Wealth is a lot of assets. Wealth is accumulation of material things that equal power, but you don't have no power. So you are in a relationship with a Caucasian person, but the Caucasian person comes from a people who are in power, while the lover, the black person who is the sex object, they are still coming from a people who are powerless, regardless if they have money or not. Your words and your opinions don't really mean anything. Talk is cheap, action speaks. You can see that in the world. If you try to debate or argue this point, then it's a losing battle. Because we're living it. We see it every day. Then in my conclusion, the Caucasian people give us plenty of sex, sodomy. They give us trinkets. They might give you a hug and a pat on your backside. Some of them still pat you on the head like you're a dog. But you also never see them telling black people to embrace their African self. Learn what Africa is. You never hear them say that. The Caucasian man would never tell his wife, you need to study Africa. The Caucasian woman will never tell her black husband, study Africa. Learn how to love your black self. You can love me, but how can you love me if you don't love black? That's what you are. 
You are a black person. You are an African. You are a descendant of slaves. Learn your history. Learn yourself. And they are not going to tell their spouse, their sodomy lover, their unfortunately, and this, this is not dis disrespectful, but they are in the position of a pet. That's disrespectful. Well, I'm just sorry because that's what it is. Because a pet don't have any power. A pet has no say so. And that's the position that these people in these interracial relationships have. They have no power. They just something to play with. And they're not going to tell you to love Africa. They're not going to tell you how to learn how to love your black self. Because if you learn how to love your black self, if you learn how to love this melanin that flows through your skin and throughout your body, then you will not love them, anybody, even a black person. When you begin to love black, then even though Black comes in many shades. Black is light brown and brown and and, and, and what y'all call red bone. And black comes in all kinds of colors. But when you begin to love and learn how to love your black self, then that's what you want. So the red bone want her a black man. Because when those babies born, I want those babies to get some color. The light-skinned brothers and sisters, when they learn how to love black, they want to get blacker. They don't want to produce light no more. They want blacker. Light ain't cute no more. Even though we naturally can produce a lighter shade of black. They don't want it because you fall in love with black. And if Caucasian people really love black, a black woman, if a pink person really loves a black man or woman, they will also want their children to be black. They want their babies to learn how to love and know their African black self if they were true lovers. And when your Caucasian spouse, when they leave this world, then they will make sure all their assets, all their material things go to the black. All the interracial couples in this country. Why doesn't the black community benefit from this? If you don't have self-hatred. If the black people involved in interracial relationships. If you really care. Why don't we see this love in the black community? Because your wealth will show up in the black community. But you leave the black community, you leave your people, and go with your uh, Caucasian lover, and you take your money with you. You take your skills with you. You take your talent with you. That's the reason why I have a problem with interracial relationships. You can, you can love who you want to, but the bottom line, there's, a, there's an imbalance, and there's a whole lot of it is fake. Because if black people learn how to love themselves, you would not want to love a people, or the child of a, of a people that enslaved and terrorized your ancestors. It's impossible. Jot down your comments. Thank you for listening. This is your brother, Angel Slumber 7. This was and is the Reality's Temple on Earth. Like the king, we make it plain and simple. Bringing knowledge and fire at reality simple.